Hey there econ students and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we're going to be looking at the circular flow of economic activity but we're going to be actually doing it a different way. We're going to be practicing this. This entire video is going to be practice problems and understanding how to take this theory and this model and apply it to the real world. Now this video is part two of a two-part series. It's looking at the application of this model. Make sure you've watched my first video. That video covered everything that's happening within the circular flow of economic activity and explained why it was occurring. It's really important for you to understand this model before watching this video because this whole video is going to be practice problems to help you with your quiz or test. We're going to be looking at this model now in a different way and practicing how to understand what would happen in it especially when variables change in the real world. Now, while watching this, make sure you're using your guided notes. That's going to be important so you are taking notes with it and actually doing these problems. Don't just watch the video and have me do them for you. Make sure you're pausing the video throughout this so you can learn it. If you don't want to use my guide notes, feel free to use your own. So as long as you're taking notes and being active, you'll be good. So before we get into the practice problems, let's just quickly review a couple tips when using this model. Tip number one is to remember that businesses and households always have to be on opposite sides. They'll never be next to each other. So if a problem ever tells us that the households are in a box A or B or whatever box it says, whatever box is the opposite of it has to be the other one. Businesses and households never next to each other. Tip number two is to remember that our factor market and product market always need to be across from each other. They can never be next to each other. So just like our businesses and households, if we know that one box or one area of the model is the factor market, whatever is opposite of that, the other side, is going to be our product market. And our last tip, tip number three, is going to be remembering that this is all about transactions. So goods and services will go one way on the model and our money or revenue will go the other. There has to be an exchange. And that'll make sense. You don't go into Target and just give them money and leave. Or you don't go into Target, give them money, and then they give you money back. That, that's not how it works. You exchange. You give them money, they give you goods. There is a back and forth. Same thing with when you go to work. So remember those tips as we go over these practice problems. Now what I want you to do is try and solve some of these problems. If you're using the guided notes, pause the video right now and go through the problems in the guided notes. Once you're done, unpause the video and then we'll go over them together. So we're gonna start off a little bit easier. We can see that we have our factor, product, our business, and households all marked on this model. However, the arrows are blank. So we'll have to figure out what's going on here. First statement is looking at the final flow of goods and services would be represented from blank to where? Hopefully, if you have an idea, remembering some of our tips that we covered at the start of this video, you have an idea here. If not, not a problem. Pause this video if you need more time for this question, but the answer is going to be from our product market to households. Now the question though is why? Now we're talking here the final goods and services. So these are things that are already produced, they're finished. Well, final goods and services are purchased by consumers. So our product market is where they're sold. So consumers go into the product market, we would purchase them, and then we bring them home. So looking at the arrows then, we'd be looking at between the product market, going back to the households. Hopefully this first one is making sense. Let's go on to question number two. All right, so for question number two, we have a very similar problem. Now we're looking at the money that households spend would be best represented from an arrow from blank to blank. Well, think about this one for a second. Hopefully you know this one. If you don't again, not a big deal. Think back even to our last problem that we just did. Now if you said going from households to product market, you're correct. Remember, we have to have a transaction. If goods and services are coming from our product market and going to our households, like we figured out in the last problem, then we have to have money going from the households to our product market. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to purchase those goods and services. So there is a transaction happening. So now, even though we don't know where the arrows are going originally on this model, we now have figured out that our goods and services are going this way, and our households, which are going to be spending everything, so our money is going this way. So hopefully this is making sense. We just covered actually one of the tips that we started the video off on. Now, let's take it up a little bit more in difficulty and go on to question number three. Question three is a little different from our first two, but still pretty similar. 
We can see here we have our same model that we're looking at and not much has changed. Actually, nothing's changed. What we have to figure out now, though, is the flow of land, labor, ideas, and capital. Where would that be best represented by? From where to where? So take a second, try to think to yourself. If you need to pause this video, pause it. Remember, actually practicing this and trying is going to help a lot more than you just listening to me. So make sure you're being active right now. Now, if you said from households to the factor market, you are correct. When we're talking about our land and our labor and ideas, these are factors of production. We are producing here. These aren't final goods or these aren't the final services. This is going into the factor market where people work. And remember, a factor market can be a variety of things, but this is where things get turned into final goods. This is the production stage of the economy where we are producing things. So that's important to remember. Now, I think we've done enough of these kind of more basic ones. Let's get into actually a real life situation and up the ante a little bit. So we're gonna move on to question number four where the difficulty, just like the question order, is going to be going up. On to question four. So for this next question, we can see a couple things have changed. This is a more difficult question. When looking at our chart, I can see that it's not labeled anymore. I have box A, B, C, and D, and I have to figure out what's going on. You can also see that this question is a lot longer. There's a lot more happening in it. When reading questions like this, it's really important to take it slow and break it into parts. Try to understand what's happening in the question. I'm gonna read the question to you now and then we'll go over the answer. But make sure you've paused this video and you've tried to think this through already. And while watching the video then, once you unpause it, if you needed to pause it, make sure then you're following along with what I'm saying and looking at your own notes. So that way you can see how to break this down when you don't have a video helping you out. Now we can see that Alyssa purchases her school supplies at Target. So right here we can see that there's a relationship. Alyssa is the household, she's going into Target, which is gonna be our product market, and she's purchasing a good and bringing it home. The next part is Frank likes to get his hair cut at Grey Clips. Again, Frank is gonna be our household, and while now not purchasing a good, he's purchasing a service. So still going from our product market. So right there, we've identified already two different things happening within our model. If the flow of school supplies from Target to Alyssa is represented by an arrow from box D to B, then the haircut that Frank got from Grey Clips is represented by an arrow from where? So take a second, try to figure it out. Pause this video if you need to. So if you said from box D to B, you're correct, but why? Why is it the exact same of what Alyssa is doing? Well, the reason why is goods and services go together. Remember, they're going to flow the same direction in our model, and the money is going to go opposite of it. There's an inverse there, because what's happening is this transaction. So when Frank goes into the product market, it's the same product market as Alyssa. While the store might be different, the concept is the same. They're both purchasing the product market, so they're gonna be giving their money to the product market and then both taking our goods home. So if Alyssa is having her school supplies from Target represented by the box D to B, same thing is going on then for Frank as well. Hopefully this is kind of making sense. Let's go on to the next question, question number five. So due to some technical issues, I lost part of the video. So I'm just gonna narrate this part of question five, but my video will be back for when I go over the answers. So for question five, we can see if businesses or firms are sellers in the markets represented by box C, then what? Take a second, pause the video. We can see we have some multiple choice here. So try to figure it out. Once you think you got it, unpause the video. So if you put C, you're correct. But the question is, why are you correct? It's not important right now if you got the right answer. It's important if you understand how to get the right answer. Because then when we get to a quiz or test, you'll be able to do fine. Let's go through all the options here and make sure you understand exactly why C is correct and why the other answers are not. Let's look at A again. A is saying box C must represent the factor market. Well, we know from our prompt that businesses are sellers in the markets represented by C. So we know C then can't be the factor market because businesses don't sell in the factor market. Businesses are purchasing in the factor market. They're the ones that are then hiring people and they're producing their goods. So A is automatically eliminated because again, businesses don't sell in the factor market. Now, if we look at B, B is saying that box D must represent the product market. Now the product market is where businesses sell. This is where then households go to purchase items. 
However, a prompt is saying that businesses are sellers in the markets represented by box C. So we actually know then that box C has to be the product market. And if box C is the product market, well, it can't also be box D. So we can cross B off. And by crossing those off, we already know then that D can't be right because, well, they're not all right. So then we come to C. And C again is saying firms or buyers in the market represented by box D. So if we know that box C is our product market, that makes box D the factor market. And we know that businesses are buying there because they're hiring employees and they're producing their products. Hopefully this is starting to make more sense. Let's go on to the next question, question number six. So question number six is a little bit more complicated, but we'll be able to figure it out. Let's go over the question and then we'll go over the answer. So you own and operate a toy factory and Christmas is right around the corner. In order to handle the new demand for toys, you will need to hire more employees. If the revenue from your toys sold in stores is represented by the flow of money from box D to A, then the new workers coming to work for you is represented by an arrow from... Take a second, pause the video if you need to, and then we'll go over the answers. Now this problem's really tricky. Hopefully when I was reading through it, you were kind of breaking down the question to understand what's happening in this story. Now let's go over the answer, and what we're gonna do then is break this down because this one is a little bit harder than some of our other ones. If you said from box B to C, you are correct. Now, why is that though? So let's go back to our question. We know that we are the owner, we have a factory and we're producing toys. And we know it's Christmas time, so our demand is gonna be up. So we're talking about a business here and we're talking about a product that we sell being toys. Now, what the problem gives us, or our prompt, it does say that the revenue from our toys being sold in the stores is represented by an arrow from box D to A. So I know that the revenue is coming from box D and going to A. That would make D my product market and A the businesses, which then, since we identified those two boxes, I also now know that box C is going to be my factor market and box B is going to be my households. Also, because I know which way the revenue is going, I can see that my, on the outside at least, the arrows are going to be my money. That's what's happening there. And on the inside of the diagram then, going the opposite way, is our goods and services. So now we've identified the whole chart, and that's important for you to be able to do. This way you can take these concepts and apply it to any situation. Now the question though is, why is it going from B to C? Well, by understanding now, and we can see it's labeled on the screen, this chart, we can see that our workers are going to be people from the household. Remember, the households are selling the factors of production. And one of that is actually your time, your labor. And they work in the factor market. So the second part of this prompt, the last part there, is saying, well, what arrow would show our workers coming to work for us to produce things? Well, we produce stuff again in the factor market, which is going to be here, and they'll come from their households. So we're going to go from box B to C. Hopefully this is making sense. What we would see then from C to A, as some of you may have put that, this is actually going to be the goods being transported now. Our goods have been produced. They're going to the business, then is eventually going to be sent out to the product market where they'll be able to be purchased. I hope this is now making sense. Let's go on to our next question, question number seven. So for our next problem, we are looking now at money. So we have Maria works for her uncle at his bike shop and gets paid an hourly wage. Her brother also works at the bike shop but gets paid on commission and does not receive an hourly wage. If Maria's wage is represented by the flow of dollars from box B to D, then her brother's commission is represented by the flow of dollars from Take a second, pause the video if you need to. If you said from box B to D, you are correct. One of the things to remember here is money is going to travel the same direction. So what's happening here? Well, we know that Maria's money is going from box B to D. So it's going then from our factor market to the household. That's where she's getting her check. Well, the brother isn't getting paid an hourly wage, but he's still making commission, and that's still gonna fall under wages. So it's going to travel the exact same direction. All right, we have time for about one more question. So let's go on to the last question, question number eight. So for question number eight, our last question, we have if the buyers of land, labor, and capital are represented by box B of the circular flow diagram, then A, businesses are represented by box C, B, 
businesses are represented by box A, C, households are represented by box A, or D, households are represented by box C. Take a second, think about it, pause the video if you need to, and if you said C, you are correct. But why is C correct? Well, we know from the prompt that the buyers of land, labor, and capital are represented by box B. Well, the people who are buying all of the factors of production are businesses. So right there, I know that box B is businesses. This immediately then eliminates number A and B. By number, I mean letter, should have said letter. Now at the same time too, if I think back to my tips that I went over at the start of the video, I know if businesses are B, households have to be on the opposite side. They can't be next to each other, remember. So that automatically then eliminates D, and that leaves us with C. I hope this video helped you better understand this model and how to apply it. While we only went over eight problems, we covered a bunch of different examples, and that should help you prepare for your quiz or test. If you do have any questions, make sure to let me know. And if this video was helpful, consider subscribing and feel free to check out some of the other videos on the channel as well. Until next time, I'm Mr. Sin. We just practice the circular flow of economic activity and I'll see you next time online. All right, we're done. Time to go to the product market and buy me some Chipotle because I'm hungry and Chipotle is great.